The views and opinions expressed in this podcast do not necessarily reflect those of any major corporation whatsoever. Hey, Bonnie. Yes. Uh, guess what? What? No, guess. Um, tulips on an organ? No, my stoned friend. It's homework time once again on the <laughs> Public Zoom podcast. This week's homework is once again brought to you by the makers of Plumbuses and Denny and the Denny Singers. <coughs> People of the internet, your attention, please. Stop your meme generating and kindly pay attention. Fine. Each week here on the show, the Council of Bellas selects a piece of homework via the fiery ritual of carousel. <laughs> a homework <laughs> assignment carefully selected in the hopes of bettering the podcast listeners, nay, all mammals everywhere, except sloths, because I think I speak for everyone when I say screw sloths. <laughs> they suck. It's like, oh, you're moving slow. Oh, that's why we have coffee. <laughs> Jesus. Red Bull gives you wings. You could be a flying sloth. Yeah. Yeah, and that would be very interesting to see. Yeah. So this week's homework assignment is as simple as Jerry Smith. Bunny <laughs> has never seen Rick and Morty before. And I think that that is a damn shame. So I figured that the best way to start the show, there were a number of different ways I was going to go about showing Bell, uh, showing Bunny, Rick and Morty. I was going to do this episode, then I was going to do that episode, then I yeah. was going to focus on the council of ricks and then i was going to focus on this and that and i was going to do the purge have to show you the purge episode because that's a good episode yeah. but then i figured the best episodes to start would be my absolute two favorite episodes interdimensional cable <laughs> one and two i love these bella can you stop stabbing a kfc packet of honey while i'm recording the podcast please Stop stabbing the honey. <laughs> <clears throat> also, um, uh, out of respect for my wife, I will not be mentioning the fact that the last time I went into the bedroom, I caught her uh, uh, possibly, maybe. Look, I'm not sure whether or not she was looking at Colonel Sanders porn. <laughs> But it, let's just say she may or may not have been looking at Colonel Sanders' porn. It's just all I can say. Okay. Now, before we discuss the interdimensional cable episodes of Yay. Rick and Morty, or not. I mean, they're hard to discuss because uh -huh. they're mostly sort of freeform, um, ad-libbed, improvisational feel to them. Yeah. Let's discuss the history of of Rick and Morty. We touched on this a little bit in last week's episode, but the history of Rick and Morty is absolutely amazing. I'm blown away by the story of the creation of this show. It really is amazing. So it all starts with Dan Harmon. This is pre-community. Yeah. But just to be clear, the man is a writer, producer, successful podcaster he created community which i love and everyone should love he also did Harmon quest which was great eleanor they're called ads they fill youtube there's nothing i can do about it i'm sorry that ads exist but you need to realize that they are going to be a part of your life stop, stop it with the packets of honey sauce bella really Seriously, you're going to make me break out my dad voice. He also created the Bizarre Kids horror film Monster House. Yeah. Which, if I'm not mistaken, there were times that, that all of my kids were obsessed with that movie. Uh-huh. Monster House, Bella. Monster no, House. You remember Monster House? 
No. It's an animated movie about a house that comes to life and eats people. Ah! Monster house. I, yeah. I had only yeah. seen the. I had only seen it when it had first come out, but I kind of enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah, he helped create that. Um, so he's the so Dan Harmon. He's the sort of guy who who's just always creating. You know, he's always creating stuff. Oh, a- a- Amber's out. Amber, just to let you know, uh, later when we do the social media shoutouts. Uh, I've chosen you to be my social media shout out because uh, I love you and care about you and you're you're an important member of this family. And I just wanted to put a spotlight on you and how amazing you are. And it's not because you have a ridiculous amount of Facebook friends or Instagram followers. And that would help out the podcast. It's because you're amazing. Okay. (laughs) So I want to be clear about that. You're a wonderful person and people should be talking about how great you are. So that's why. Yeah. I'd hate to spoil it, but because we're not even at that part yet. But I just wanted to let you know that I'm going to be talking about how amazing you are, and maybe you should share that with people. <laughs> so. All right. I, uh... So Dan Harmon, he's the sort of guy who's always creating. So in 2002, he started a short film festival slash reality show oh, competition no. slash game monster weird thing. It, in LA, it was called. It's it's still going on. In fact, there's a sister festival in New York, but it's called the Channel 101 Festival. Okay. okay. So Dan Harmon created this in 2002, the Channel 101 Festival, and basically this is how it works: you send in short animated films, and not even and not animated, just short films in general. Basically, you create a small pilot. And okay. you you uh, send it into the Channel 101 Festival, and there's a small council of people who it, yes. watch them and decides which one should make it to the final festival. And then the final festival comes along, and there's all of these pilots. And so the audience at the festival chooses which pilots they like and want to see more of and which ones they don't. So if your pilot is chosen then you get to make another episode in the next festival. Uh-huh. Okay. And either they like that or they don't. So if when you you go to the Channel 101 festival and there will be like 40% continuations of shows from other festivals and 60% brand new shows that you can decide whether they live or die. That's nice. the Channel 101 festival. Yeah. Nice. You you can make a pilot and and it's really funny and then you get chosen and you get to move on to the next <laughs> Channel 101 festival and but that one's not funny and then you're canceled. <laughs> so it's 2005 and it's important to note this YouTube is still a baby at this period in time. Mm-hmm. YouTube is still fairly new. Studios aren't 100% sure what to do with it. it, it people aren't 100% familiar with cease and desist or yes. a copyright notification claim. Like, I'm not that much of a creative type person, and I've had a shit ton. Uh huh. You know, it's just something that people have gotten used to. So, anyway, it's 2005, and there's a young creative type named Justin Royland. Royland? Royland? He comes along. He makes a number of submissions to the Channel 101 Festival. Some of them are good. Some of them are bad. All of them are pretty ridiculous and offensive. Then, in 2005, he discovers some software that allows him to make animation quickly and cheaply. Uh Uh-huh. It's like, oh, oh, crap. With this new software, I can just crank out animation. So now Justin Roiland is off and running. With animation, he's no longer hindered to the restraints of live action. He can basically, now the only limit is his own creation. He can do whatever he wants. So his first animated show for the Channel 101 Festival was an animated show called The House of Cosby's. Yes. And it's about this guy, and he loves Bill Cosby. He's obsessed with Bill Cosby, so he gets some of Bill Cosby's DNA, and he starts cloning a bunch of Bill Cosby's. 
<laughs> and so he lives in a house with like nine different Bill Cosby's and each Bill Cosby has a different thing, a different power, a different uh Cosbyism. A different Cosbyism, yeah. It's like, so what do you think I should do? Cosby number six? Oh well, Cosby number six is just the long winded story, Cosby. You <laughs> should go maybe Cosby number nine can help you out. That's the always in the bath, Cosby. <laughs> so so House of Cosby's huge, huge hit. And by the way, almost all of what I'm talking about is available on YouTube right now, which is weird. Me. <laughs> it's the internet. You can't stop anything anymore. Yeah. So House of Cosby's is out there. I watched a few of them. So House of Cosby's big, big hit for Justin Roiland. Dan Harmon's like, whoa, I should remember this Justin Roiland guy. I think I'm mispronouncing his name, but that's fine. Um. So after a few months of House of Cosby's, they get a cease and desist letter from Bill fucking Cosby. <laughs> like Bill Cosby's lawyers are like, you need to stop making this cartoon. Oh, man. And they get a cease and desist letter. And again, I, I should point out the way early days of YouTube. So this is a big deal. For yeah. Justin Roiland and Dan Harmon and the Channel 101 Festival to get a cease and desist letter. And from a big name, too. This, is, this isn't just a cease and desist letter from a company. This is from Bill frickin' Cosby. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they're like, wow. And, and with that came some press. Like, oh, look at this. Bill Cosby is upset about this cartoon. It's a cartoon from the Channel 101 Festival, a cartoon created by a young artist named Justin Roiland. So the cease and desist letter, in a way, it's kind of seen as a victory, you know? Yes. So much so that Justin Roiland and his friends go, wow, cease and desist letter. Wow, that, that that's a big deal, huh? <laughs> well, well, gee, what big name can we fucking piss off next? <laughs> we need another cease and desist moment, basically. <laughs> so we need to figure out another way to piss off a major celebrity or a company or a corporation. So Justin Roiland goes from House of Cosby's directly to the real animated adventures of Doc and Marty. <laughs> real in big letters, big splashy letters. The real animated adventures of Doc and Mar Marty featuring Doc Brown and Marty McFly. They're never called, they never use Brown or McFly. I, I don't think they even say DeLorean. They say, they just say time machine and there's a, silver car nearby yeah but it's obvious what this is there's a, there's even a lot of time travel in a lot of these videos um but the real animated adventures of doc and marty featuring doc brown as a drunk and drug abuser and marty as his whiny sidekick the balls of justin roiland <laughs> The balls of this man, yeah, of Justin and the Channel 101 uh, Festival, all of the Channel 101 people to just grab two iconic characters from a legendary film, a film that everybody loves, and turn them into their own characters. Mm -hmm. Who does that? Who has the balls? That's amazing to me. <laughs> also, um, Bella, earmuffs. 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 You. Earmuffs. Okay. So most of the episodes of the real adventure, animated adventures of Doc and Marty have to do with some sort of problem, some sort of, oh, no, the time machine isn't working. Yeah. Uh, uh, Marty, Marty, I know how to fix it, but uh, there's, there's just one thing that you can do to fix it. Oh, jeez. Oh, gosh. Oh, well, I'll do anything. Okay, well, the only way that we can fix this time machine. 
is if you give me a blowjob, Marty. <laughs> what? I'm sorry. It's just, if you want to, me to fix the time machine, you need to suck it, Marty. Most <laughs> of these cartoons ended that way. Really? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Bella, you can un... Bella. 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 Un-earmuffs. Un it really hurts! Yeah, well, I didn't tell you to, to earmuff yourself that hard. <laughs> By the way, earmuffs, that's a reference to the movie Old School. The movie Old School is secretly a comedy remake of the film Fight Club. In fact, the <laughs> creators of the movie Old School thought they were going to be sued that, for it. It's quite that, interesting, if you know that. Really? No. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there's oh, a lot oh, of similarities. Okay. If you if you know that going in Whee! to the movie Old School, then it's glaringly that's obvious. So... The balls on these people. Yes. This is the biggest balls I've ever seen. To just get Doc Brown and Marty McFly and turn Doc Brown into an alcoholic drug abuser and Marty McFly into like a whiny crybaby child. Anyway, it, 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 it's, it's amazing. It's amazing. So, also, the, all, these cartoons, the real animated adventures of Doc and Marty, are online as much as Universal would want them not to be. Okay. So, they did a lot of them. They did a ton of them, a shit shitload of them. They're all really funny. They even do ones where, where it not, and you know, Channel 101 and Justin Roiland are getting cease and desist letters from Universal, and it's like, oh, you must cease and desist using our characters, and Justin Roiland is like, oh, great, uh, uh, another cease and desist letter from Universal. I'll add that to the pile. <laughs> And they just keep making these cartoons. They're really popular. They're really successful. And uh, Justin Roiland and the entire Channel 101 uh, festival, it, it, they're, it's becoming a big deal. It's becoming a big deal for them. And people love these characters. Yeah. So uh, Dan Harmon and Justin Roiland go their separate ways. They're becoming names now for what they're doing. Uh, and Dan Harmon goes and does Community. Mm -hmm. And Justin Roiland is tapped to create a number of animated pilots for TV shows. Mm. He is specifically he specifically he creates two different fully realized, fully developed animated pilots for two mm. different networks, both of which bombed and went nowhere. Yeah. He got the whole, hey, you're an upstart young anima animation filmmaker. It, this is your big break. You're gonna do this show for us. It's gonna be huge. Yeah, we're gonna. It's gonna be amazing. Uh, yeah, it's, this is gonna be huge for you. So why don't you work on this pilot? It's gonna be great. We can't wait to work with you. Okay, here's the pilot. Yeah, pass. Bye. <laughs> so Justin Roiland he gets pissed with TV and animation on TV and the whole animation system. Uh. It, Justin Roiland ends up doing a bunch of voiceover work. He he was a character on the show Fish Hooks. And that's yeah. weird because this is the second time we've mentioned the animated show Fish Hooks on the podcast. <laughs> yes. Because uh, what's his name? Missing Gay Man? Uh, Richard, Richard Simmons. Simmons. Richard Simmons. He was, he was the PE teacher on Fish Hooks. <laughs> it's weird that this is the second time that we've mentioned fish hooks but yeah Justin Roiland he he did a number of uh, voiceover work and it, it was good for him because he was becoming a big name he was impressive with the way that he could do Doc Brown and Marty McFly he did both characters he voiced both of them and he could switch between both of them in the same breath and have both of the characters talking again, oh, talking with each other and riffing against each other yeah. and ad-libbing all of these lines, but it's just him, and he does an amazing job. Yeah. It's incredible. Interesting little fact, one of the two animated pilots that Justin Roiland did was a show called Dog World. Dog and World. These two kids who, go, who find this wormhole and end up in a... Uh, alternate universe where dogs are in charge and they have humans for pets yeah, and scary. that is actually referenced in one of the first episodes of Rick and Morty oh yeah yeah they have a dog and they want the dog and the, the Smith family wants the dog to be smarter and 
uh, Rick goes, yeah, I can make a device that can make the dog smarter, but just be careful what you wish for. But whatever, I guess you guys don't care. So here, uh, I just made this thing, and there you go. Now your dog is smarter, and the dog gets too smart. It, the episode is called the dog mower man because the, the <laughs> dog gets way too smart and suddenly the dog is in this giant robotic suit and waking up the humans late at night. Where are my testicles, Summer? <laughs> so then he starts creating outfits for other dogs and all of the dogs start rising up and then eventually they realize their mistake when uh, Morty gets sick and to to play with the whole Rick is kind of an asshole thing. Morty is only sick because uh, Rick made him sick. <laughs> gave him cancer or something like that. Yeah. So so finally the it, Morty gets better, the dog has a change of heart and goes into a portal trying to find an, a world. There must be a world out there, an alternate dimension where dogs are in charge and Morty goes, "Wow, a world where dogs are in charge." A dog world. That sounds great, doesn't it, Rick? And here, here's an important bit. Rick is like Q. Okay. In the sense that he is such a smart character that he, a lot of times he knows he's a character in a show. Okay. <laughs> yeah. He's smart like that, yeah. So, so in at the end of that episode, Rick uh, Morty goes, wow, a world where... Dogs are in charge. A dog world. That sounds great, doesn't it, Rick? Oh, yeah, that'd be amazing. You could flesh that out, turn it into a series. That'd be a great series to watch. I can picture the merchandise. I'd watch that for 11 minutes a pop. A real, like, insider reference. So, anyway, Dan Harmon's doing Community. Justin Roiland is getting screwed by animation, and he's <laughs> pissed off about it. He's burned out by the anime, uh, by the animation the scene. Yeah. So that was the situation where, in season four of Community, Dan Harmon was fired. He was so drunk, they made a documentary about him. Yes. That's pretty impressive. I, I've seen the documentary. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, they fired him for season four of Community, and they thought that they could continue on. And season four isn't the best, but um, so Dan Harmon is drunk and he's floating around, and he's approached by Adult Swim. Adult Swim is like, "Wow, Dan Harmon is out of a job. Let's tackle him now." Yeah, while he has nothing to do, and he can do stuff for us. So. Adult Swim is like, hey, Dan Harmon, we're big fans. We love Community. We're a big fan of all of your work. Hey, will you do a show for us? And Dan Harmon goes, oh, yeah, I'd love to do a show for you. That's great. I, yeah, I've got so many ideas. I've got an idea for this live action show. I've got an idea for this sitcom. I thought this was a funny premise. And what about this? But Adult Swim is all, no, 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 no. We have enough live action. Adult Swim is supposed to be an animated block of shows, and it's primarily live action and we're just sick of that so we need animation we need you to do an animated show for us we need a, an animated hit for adult swim we don't really have one right now uh and we we just need you to do an animated show for us and dan Harmon goes animation i don't know animation i just do live action i've done shows i've done things and they're all live action i don't know anything about animation. Literally, I know nothing about it, and I don't know anyone else who does. I know... Okay. I know a guy. <laughs> Wait here, Adult Swim. I'm gonna go talk to a friend of mine. So, Dan Harmon goes to Justin Roiland, who's all, no, I'm burned out. I'm burned out. I'm done. I've already done the pilot scene, and I've created all these shows, and I worked really hard on them, only to have people shit on them. Like, I'm done. I'm done with all of these uh, networks, and yada, yada, yada. So, basically, Justin Roiland's like, okay, well, how about this? I'll do a show if it's Doc and Marty, because those were fun. Those were great. I love the Doc and Marty uh, back when I was doing those. That was fun. Can we do a Doc and Marty show? And Dan Harmon said, no, we can't do Doc and Marty. We don't even own them. I mean, there's no way that we could. Okay, I've got an idea. Okay. And basically, that's the story of the history of Rick and Morty. Yeah. 
Well, it's it's obvious right up front. I mean, even just seeing pictures of them together. Yeah. That was like one of the first things I mentioned to you. It, 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 how does this relate to Back to the Future? Because it's, it's clearly Doc and Marty to me. Yeah. But it, the impressive thing about Rick and Morty is the fact that it originally was created just as a way to piss off the Universal Corporation. Yeah. <clears throat> but quickly, within just a, a handful of episodes in the first season, they really do turn this into their own creation. There's no time travel. There's no DeLorean. It has to do with alternate universes and a multiverse and different possibilities. And it, it's surprisingly deep. It's a deep show. That's one of the things that pisses Bella off what? about Rick and Morty is the what? fact that it's hilarious and it's offensive. But literally, in one second, it can quickly turn a corner and become the most depressing show in the world. Have I said that <laughs> yeah. before? Yeah, you have. But in fact, there's one remember? specific episode where okay. Rick is just drunk as hell. It, the episode ends like this. I want to once again say that this is an animated comedy on Adult Swim. Yeah. But the episode ends with Rick drunk and depressed and crying. So he quickly creates a machine to kill himself. <laughs> okay. And he sets it up on his desk and he, and he creates a tiny little life form and then puts it in the, the, in the path of the ray machine and the ray machine turns on and it completely obliterates the creature so he puts the ray machine to his temple right to his forehead and he's crying and he's sad and he's depressed and he's going to kill himself right there but right before the ray machine turns on he passes out because that's how drunk he is and the only reason why he's not dead is because he's too drunk <laughs> and that's how this animated comedy ended <laughs> yeah so that pisses off Bella. They just finished their third season on Adult Swim, which set records. It's the highest watched show in the network's history. And really? that's not Adult Swim. That's Cartoon Network in general. Nice. And they just today, I believe, today or yesterday, announced that, uh, that yeah, the ratings are good. The ratings are good. For Rick and Morty, and it is a insanely popular TV show. I'm, I mean, more people are watching Game of Thrones, obviously, but when it comes to that 18 to 24 demographic, that 18 to 34 demographic, yeah, Rick and Morty is the most popular show on television right now. Cool. Yeah. So it's it's uh yeah it's a record setting show. Yeah. So the show is hot as shit, surprisingly deep. Interdimensional Cable. <laughs> mm -hmm. These are two episodes. Um, see, one episode in season season one, episode eight. And then the other one comes from season two, episode eight. Interestingly enough, because Rick is so, so smart that he pretty much knows he's on a show. Season three, episode eight, features... Uh, Rick and Morty stealing this thing called a, uh, a mind turtle. Okay. From a, from mind, mind, not a mind turtle. I know, this I isn't one of those as de fact, like, whatever videos. Mind. Are. Mind tortoise, actually. Mind tortoise. Mind tortoise. And the mind tortoise gets into Morty's head and. Morty's freaking out. I, I can't do it, Rick. This this mind tortoise is in my head and it's freaking me out. So uh, Rick's like, so you want me to r remove that memory from your head? Come with me. So more, Rick takes Morty into a secret part of the house that is filled with tiny vials. Hundreds what? upon hundreds of tiny vials. And each vial is a small memory that over the years... Morty had Rick removed from his head. <laughs> and and it, before they go in there, Rick is going, come on, it, 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 don't say that. Don't you want to just sit on the couch and watch interdimensional cable? You know, like we always do. So finally he takes 
Rick takes Morty into the lab and, oh, yes, each one of these is a memory you had me removed. I call them Morty's mind blowers. And this is what we're doing instead of interdimensional cable. And he specifically says that to the camera. This is what we're doing instead of interdimensional cable. So, so yeah, there was no interdimensional cable in season three, but it was it. Yeah, I love the interdimensional cable episodes. Yeah, they go a different route. This show has its own language when yeah. it comes to fans and stuff. Yeah, uh, Plumbuses. Columbuses. Everyone has one. In fact, if I'm not mistaken, there was a Rick and Morty DVD box set that came with an actual Plumbus. Really? Okay. Yeah. Plumbuses. Everyone has one. But how are they made? First, first then they add Schleem. The Schleem is later repurposed for future use. Okay. Uh, turbulent juice. I like turbulent juice. Ball fondlers. Ball fondlers. Uh, Shrimply Pibbles, and my favorite, my favorite, this Jan January. It's time to Michael up your Vincents. (laughs) That's my favorite. Yeah. Jan Quadrant Vincent. Calling all Jan Michael Vincents. (laughs) Love that. He's a ghost. I liked it. Um, I, I, I'm not in love with it yet. Yeah, this was just a homework assignment to give you a taste for it. Yeah. Yeah. To let you know the kind of universe. Okay, they, they've really gone in depth in separating it from um, Back to the Future. There's a family, a family dynamic, Jerry and Beth and all of that. Yeah, I found that kind of surprising. Yeah, no, there, there's, yeah, there's a lot to it. You haven't even gotten to bird person. Yeah. Oh my God, or the person. Council of Ricks. The Council of Ricks. Yeah, that that's a big part throughout season one and two and the beginning of and a lot of season three that. Um, if, if there's a multiverse, then there's a, a, a multitude of Ricks and a multitude of Mortys. So a bunch of the Ricks and Mortys got together, and they created a citadel where they all live. Where a lot of them live. Yeah. And the citadel is controlled by the Council of Ricks, and those are like the Elder Ricks. <laughs> and these Ricks kind of hunt down all of the Ricks who refuse to join their council. And one of those Ricks is the Rick, because he's considered the most Rick. He's considered the most Rick. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, if there's one thing that Ricks hate, it's themselves. <laughs> so that's a big, huge... Basically, Rick and Morty is my Game of Thrones. I don't yeah. care for Game of Thrones. At first, I was like, oh, I can't watch Game of Thrones because I have kids, so I can't watch this weird incest nudity sex show with dragons yeah but then it just became a no it's not that i can't watch it it's just that i just don't want to yeah i don't i don't know for me as soon as porn entered the world in a real way movies or tv shows or anything like that that has a sexual content I don't I don't care. You know, it's like it's like that's that's not interesting. Yeah. It's just not my bag. I, I know but where to go for that. Yeah. No, I, don't want anything I mean now if I was seventeen and that was the closest I was getting, I'd be all over that yes. shit. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No. No. It, absolutely. Um Rick and Morty is huge. Rick and Morty is very popular right now and also, a certain bookstore chain, which will remain nameless, which is ridiculous because what other bookstore chain is there? But anyway, yeah, a certain bookstore chain is filling up with freaking Rick and Morty stuff. <laughs> Rick and Morty puzzles, Rick and Morty t- 
toys, Rick and Morty games. Wow. We've got an Anatomy Park game. Yeah. And, uh, of course, the Mr. Meeseeks box, which is, like, really freaking expensive. But, but yeah, I love this show. It's my Game of Thrones. And, Bunny, if you want to watch more, apparently they're all on Daily Motion. Okay. I might Daily check Motion. out one or two more. Yeah. Daily Motion is, is uh, way less copyright crazy yeah. than YouTube. So, they're all there. They are literally all there. Cool. Yeah. I love, I love. Jeannie didn't Rick. like it. She didn't like it? I don't want to call her any name. No, I didn't like it. I, I'm sitting here watching and then I go, why do they, do, that's really stupid. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's official. It's almost, Jeannie's no, dead. no, it's almost honey boo boo bad. How dare you? How dare you? Like, everybody says you gotta like this, so you watch it, and so you then you have to say you like it too, because everybody else does. But... Well, maybe you just don't like the, the weird, bizarre, improvisational feel of the interdimensional cable episodes. Watch the Mr. Meeseeks episode. That's a great episode. That's an amazing episode. Watch Tales from the Citadel, season Woo-hoo! three. That's, a, That's another amazing. great episode. That's a dark one. And That's it features amazing. a lot of references to Training Day and Stand By Me. Yeah. Yeah. A bunch of Mortys from the Citadel go looking for, like, this fabled wishing portal. Yeah. And there's, like, the fat Morty. Yeah. I'm the fat Morty, but I thought I was left-handed. Oh, well, why don't you use that left hand to eat a salad? But yeah, a lot of Training Day references in that episode, which is weird. Yeah. It's the last time you I, saw something different Training Day, but anyway. I, 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 sometimes the riffing got a bit too much, you know? Yeah, the yeah off like, the cuff. Uh, like the preview for Two Brothers. Yeah, it's just, it's just like... Mexican Armada. You're reaching... No, two mothers I kind of liked, but so, on some of them they were just like he was just running out of shit to say, and it showed. Yeah, you yeah. know, yeah. No, that happens a lot in that. But 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 the show's amazing. You should give it a try, Bunny. I really think that you'd be interested in it, and that's yeah. what this entire <laughs> homework segment was about: was trying to get you to watch Rick and Morty, and so that was a success. <laughs> That is it for homework this week. And we here at the Pope on Film podcast sincerely hope and pray, minus the pray part, that your hearts, minds, and bank accounts are all thorough, have all been suitably opened. Thanks, Equifax. <laughs> yeah. In my defense, though, I only gave Equifax all of my personal information because I thought Equifax was a place where I could get faxes about horses. Yes. I that's, thought it was like a, That's what I would that, think. I, I thought that's what Equifax meant. Mm-hmm. I'd be getting like daily faxes about like horse information or I don't know, pictures of sexy horses. <laughs> that's a sentence I didn't think I'd be saying today, so that's exciting. Horses in lingerie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fake wigs. Centerfold. <laughs> This week's centerfold, Sea Biscuit. <laughs> horse, uh, 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 ocean breadstick. And the, and the horse is holding up a wall and looking over his shoulder at you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ah, but don't <sighs> think you're getting out of here that easily, bucko. Or muchacho. Which one's better? Do you think buck, bucko or muchacho? You know what? I'll just combine them. Buckchacho. Buckchacho. I can I can live with buckchacho. Don't think you're getting out of here that easily, buckchacho. Oh, thank you. Don't forget next week's homework. And for next week, we will be learning proper customer service techniques from the kings of customer service. Blockbuster video. <laughs> okay. 
I found a 17-minute customer service training video for all Blockbuster video employees from 1990. Oh, God. Hiding on YouTube. And there are one or two captions in Spanish, which I don't understand. And if you think I do, then you're racist. (laughs) But, yeah, a 17-minute 1990 Blockbuster video training video. Apparently, they made a shit ton of training videos, and there were a lot of them. I also found a half-hour one from 2000, one from 1998. I chose 1990. That was the earliest that I could find. So that is next week. So join us next week for more homework with the Pope on Film podcast. What is the video actually called? Uh, Let me see. Uh, so I've got it on my list here. Library full cult B movies. Go all the way to the end. All the way to the end. All the way to the end. It's called Blockbuster Training Video Brackets 1990 Full. Okay. It's also on my uh, full cult B movie list. Okay. Oh, yeah. It's right there. So that is next week. So join us next week for Blockbuster Video Customer Service. That is next week on Homework with the Pope on Film Podcast. And cut. (laughs) 